All right, so the time signals are as usual. I think there's no need to explain them at the moment since this is the fifth round. Uh, I apologize for this late once again. So without any further ado, I would like to call up on behalf of the paper title. Thank you. This is not an ordinary debate about territorial dispute. This is a debate about a group of islands. It lies 300, 300 miles away from Argentina and 8,000 miles from the Great Britain. We say that only Argentina can provide a sufficient service to those people, as well as it's the only, per only country that can even claim this island to be there. We say that Argentina is the one that historically, as well as presently, is the one that is enti entitled to be, to be on that land. And we, we, they, we, this is why we say Las Malvinas belong to Argentina. What is our plan? We're going, we're going, we want to see uh, Las Malvinas to, uh, to, to belong to Argentina. We're going to all the existing people that are there. We're going to give them citizen, citizenship and provide them, provide them with all the services to do otherwise. We're going to provide them good quality of life and we think, we think this is going to be to, be, to work well with the people. What are our arguments in this debate? Number one, I'm going to show you how historically and from legal standpoint they belong to Argentina. Secondly, I'm going to show you how Argentina is much better in providing service to the people that are existing existing state with there and the new ones that are going to be there. And thirdly, my second speaker is going to do his his time to explain how how actually if if Scotland would belong to, to, to Britain, it would be a great reminder of of uh, colonialism and how this is very bad. So number one, historically. We know that in 17th and 18th century, it was that all European powers started to realize that it's actually really bad to just be in another land and to, to forcibly own some kind of land. We say that they considered that because they signed a number of treaties. For example, Madrid Treaty of 1604 and 1630 in Spain. The Minster Treaty of 1648, the Peace Treaty of Utrecht in 1730, and British Treaty of 1670. All of them, in all of them, powers from Europe, all the, all the big countries that, that had certain colonies, said that this is bad and that they are going to, in next year, they are going to stop that. Okay. But we say that it actually came to be moved in the year 1790, when, when Spain. Spain and Britain, Spain and Britain signed Convention of Muta. Convention of Muta was 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 a convention in which Britain considered that they have no no legal right to claim any of the South American territory or of any adjacent island. With that, Britain said that they are never never again going to to, to claim uh, territory of any of any island or any other South American territory. So from that time. Spain was the, the sole legal legal owner, if we if we say in such way, of of Port and Island. But we say that Spain also said that there are that, that, that uh, it is not okay to have such a colony. So we, we see that in year 1811, the in Argentina, the United Provinces of Rio de la Plata was formed. This was the the, the predecessor of Argentine state, and they become uh, they became, became Argentina next next year. But we say it also they, they also took to the ownership of of, of Portland Islands and they, they, they were the sole legal owner. So thank you. But we say that, that at this time it was very clear that this is not Argentina. But in year 1825, that means 14 years later, British people came again. And they said 14, 14 years later, British people came again and said, let's sign a friendship friendship agreement. In this friendship agreement, Britain said that it, that it, it is signed friendship with, with Argentina and they, it, it, they dealt with Portland Island. They said that it is okay with the Argentinian and this is, we see, we see the second time in history that British people considered that they belong to Argentina. But, but, but in, in year 29, that means 20, four years later after signing this, this treaty, British came again and said, well, this is ours. They came without any single reason. And they said, well, this is ours. We say that this goes against any principles of law, and because of this, we should, we should, we should not listen to them. 
But in the year 33, that means four years, four years after coming back, they took, took one by force the original population, said that they have to go back to Argentina and brought their own people to the one descendant. We say that this is an act of aggression, and we say that Britain has no legal claim to this island. Why do we think so? Firstly, as I said, we have signed, we have signed treaties, at least two treaties, that, that, that precisely do that. We say that actually going against what you have signed gives you no right to, to, to own this. If you sign a contract and, and, and next day come back and say, well, I don't want to sign a contract, you have no right to say that. But we say that this is international treaty. So if Britain signs a treaty, and then, then says, well, it has no, no, no legal value. Then we don't think why well, Britain has any, has any legitimacy to be a player in the international community. And because it, we say it, it has, if he, it has no legitimacy, we say it also should have should not be signed. And we say, the British say that there is this principle of outrage of nation. But precisely because of the event of 1833, where they forcibly removed the original Argentine population, we say that there, there's no such thing as outrage of nation. Because the people that were originally and legally there were forced to be removed. So the original population cannot also determine And because of the principle of auto determination doesn't apply. Our second argument is how Argentina can provide much better services to the people who live there. We say that because Argentina is really close, they, they can logistically do all the operations much quickly. Because we say that like a Portland Island in a second in a second, are too small to have to, to have industry of, it, of its own, and they they, they rely on on things, things brought from the continent. Go. So, actually, I want you to provide better service. I want to see that these people are already British. Mm -hmm. I want to see better reinforced by some civilian population. Why would it provide service to these British citizens? Argentina is the most successful state in South America. We think Argentina Argentina really wants to, to get this island, and they they they. they Again and again, say we want to provide these people as good as they can, because because all the international community, community is going to analyze the, the, what is the state in this island after 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 it, it becomes Argent, Argentina. We think that Argentina is going to try to provide as best as, as they can, so so they get some respect in the international community. So because they can logistically provide them, that means that they're going to be the infrastructure. We can also want to bring the Argentine people there. We see that this infrastructure is massively going to benefit these 3,000 existing people. Because now they don't have a lot of things to do. They don't have roads where they should be they, they can drive, and they don't have existing factories where they could, where they could build their own stuff. We say that Argentina is going to bring that, and the quality of life and this island is going to be better. But we say that also more products are going to be brought, brought to this island because, because Argentina is really close and can provide this logistical, uh, logistical operations. We also see that tourism is going to be, because Argentina is going to provide regular, regular transport uh, for, for passengers. We can look here, example of Rafa Nui, island that, that, that is close to Chile. And we say that, that, it, 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 that it, was, it was discarded by French, but French couldn't, couldn't actually have anything good because they couldn't bring tourism, they couldn't provide services. But Chile is the one that is actually able to bring tourists, to bring products that the people there need, and so you see it can bring can be infrastructure. Because we think that both historically as well, historically Argentina is done in development as well, but because it can provide better services to the people. We see the Argent the Scotland Island belong to Argentina and Argentina. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, if the situation in this island was bad in terms of economy, in terms of services, then these people on the island would have had a GDP of $55,000 per person, which is higher than the United States of America, which is higher than any country in Europe, which has uh, plenty of trade relations with the world, and such and such. Mr. Speaker. We say in that case, these people do not necessarily need services, but in that case, Mr. Speaker, these people are pretty happy with their situation, and that's why they prefer England and not Argentina, which can barely profit themselves in the first place. My argument is going to be just about self-determination. 
Secondly, I'll be talking about the practical benefits of top side of opposition to begin with. But before all that, exactly three points of rebuttal. First, they talk about how the Argentinian government can provide services for that. We say the proximity is not the criteria for to provide services. We say money is the first criteria. The Argentinian government can barely provide for its government to begin with. Yes, they're the best country in the, uh, this, uh, South America, but this is not really a criteria, right? We say the British government is much more successful than the Argentinian government to begin with. The uh, average person in the United Kingdom is much more happier than the average person in Argentina because they are not facing extreme corruptedness because they are able to get very valuable services and such measures here. The proximity is not an issue to begin with. Now, we say these people already provide services. It's their doctors will come from the United Kingdom to begin with. There are hospitals that has been provided by the United Kingdom in the way to begin with. So we don't, we don't think that is necessarily an issue to begin with. Now let's look at the idea of treaties and such. Firstly, they, were two, they talk about two kinds of treaties. The first thing, the treaty is about not invading any of any man's places. Yes, these are these, there are some kind of treaties like that, but those are those treaties are only act, act, applicable to the colonies. For example, in the case of Falkland Island, there is no this was a no man's land when the United Kingdom came into this figure. And that's why we think that since there is no man's land, they're able to get this place because they didn't have the any person's right to begin with. The Spanish came later and uh, tried to settle in man's figure, figure. Now let's get the second idea, the special case of Nutco Convention. So again, yeah, we'll try to do this the facts. A convention has double thing. The other side, the, the, the other side of the coin, Mr. Speaker, and, uh, in order to give the back, give the back the rights for the United Kingdom, the Argentinian and the Spanish rule have to do something. The Nutco Convention has already had another uh, package for the other country. For example, the Argentinian and the Spanish rule was not allowed to enter that comp uh, that land when the United Kingdom left. The United Kingdom left, but they put a flag on the country because they left a flag, a flag on it and they said that this is ours. Even though the fact that they might be uh, giving up their rights for the 50 years amount of time when they suffer from an economic crisis, Mr. Speaker, still the Argentinian, according to that convention, which the Argentinian did sign for it, Mr. Speaker, these people willingly left their rights for it and they agreed that we will not be invading the island for a 50 year and will be invading living and very peacefully to begin with. So we say that the convention that they both talk about has double sides of the coin. They are only trying to manipulate this match into the uh, facts that they try that become useful for that. So in that case, Mr. Speaker, we say that possibly the self-determination idea that they talk about, how these people are nations. We say that, Mr. Speaker, firstly, the, pe the first people, uh, the, uh, the first people to find Southern was France, then English, Mr. Speaker, who say they willingly left their rights. And in that case, Mr. Speaker, even if these people willingly left the island, they wanted to come back, and they did come back. So in under that time, for example, this can be really uh, appreciated with an analogy. We say you will have a summer house that you leave empty for a 50 years amount of time. We say, Mr. Speaker, even though the fact that you have left this house empty, still this property belongs to you. And that's why, Mr. Speaker, even though the fact that Spanish rule and the Argentinian people may be settling in that house without any permits, still this does, this does not make the fact that uh, this does not make that island belonging to that uh, specific kind of people. In that case, Mr. Speaker, we think the Argentinian claims are very illegitimate because these people were the first ones to discover that island, and this was the first colony to have lived in that, Mr. Speaker. And in that case, we believe the rightful owner of the fact that it's Britain. But more importantly, we do not talk about the rightful ownership to begin with. We talk about the happiness of every single person, which is my first argument of self-determination. We do not necessarily care about coordinators or such. As team opposition, we care about one thing. We believe that, Mr. Speaker, the opinion, the result of our decision is going not only going to affect the United Kingdom, not only going to affect uh, the people of Argentina, but it's only going to affect the people who are living in that part of the island. So we say this is not about the match about legitimacy, but more importantly, this match is about the happiness of every single person who is living in that island. In that case, Mr. Speaker, the right of self-determination comes to the kick -in. We say if 95% of the society wants to be a part of the Britain, let them be. Let them be happy. We say the Argentinian rule of that island is only going to provide unhappiness for the people. We say the happiness of these people they should be prioritized because the effect of this decision is only going to affect that. They talk about how the Argentinian government can provide better services. We say if the people were are not satisfied with the decision, I will take a second. If the people were not satisfied with the decisions in the first place, then they would have been wanting the United Kingdom. They would be wanting Argentina, but they are clearly satisfied with the situation to begin with. In this case, Mr. Speaker, we say this is not really a matter, and it happens to matter, yes. 
So if you're, what you're saying is true, then France can, for example, move some German people out of Germany, settle French people there, and then ask the French people do want to be part of France or Germany, and that's a legitimate French claim to German. Well, where, well, we talk about no man's last places to begin with. This was a no man's place. There was no evacuation or whatsoever. United Kingdom came, and there was just a bunch of plants that were living in. And in that case, Mr. Speaker, this was a no man's land to begin with. This is not about evacuation and such. In that case, Mr. Speaker, yes, these people did expel the British in 1833, but before all that, this land belonged to that island, uh, belonged to that country. In that case, and in the case of that, Mr. Speaker, these people nicely asked these people to move out, and that's why these people moved out. In that case, Mr. Speaker, this is, has no relevance to France or to begin with. So what we have told you is that, that these people were happy, and these what people want to be a part of the Britain. These people consider themselves as British, and they consider their tied to this other, to that country in terms of culture, in terms of economy, and in terms of trade. Even if we give this island to the Argentinian government, still this island, this island is never going to be Argentine because of the cultural relationship, the economical ties, and such issues. And in that case, Mr. Schiff, let's look at the why does this happen. We say because of the practical benefits. We see the Argentine government is very corrupted at the first place because of the fact that, Mr. Speaker, there's constant corruption and the, even the people in that part of the uh, country are unable to get any services. We say that this is an extra burden on the case of Argentina and also the, in, even the bad burst uh, service that is going to be provided by the United Kingdom is going to be significantly better than this uh, country because, Mr. Speaker, these are much doing better in terms of economy and such. Now let's get why. For example, Mr. Speaker, the average GDP of that of a person in that island is fifty-five thousand dollars, which is much higher than the United States of America, Mr. Speaker. And in that case, we believe that currently the United Kingdom government is going to provide happiness enough for these people to begin with. We say the people of this island are already happy, but in the case of Argentina, this is never going to happen, Mr. Speaker, because you do not have the same trading relations. Because you do not have the same trading benefits like in the case of the European Union and the United Kingdom, Mr. Speaker. And in that case, Mr. Speaker, the Argentinian rule is only going to provide unhappiness because they do not definitely do not want these people. And also in terms of economy and such, Mr. Speaker, these people are already doing very, very well in terms of economy. The Argentinian rule is only going to hurt people because it is not going to provide the same amount of benefits, same amount of trading relationships, and same amount of services to be human. So in that case, Mr. Speaker, go with side opposition because it gives the people what they want and what they deserve. We say in this case, being native does not necessarily matter because the fact that we, these people were born on that island, which means they are the rightful owners of that island because the first place their ancestors were the ones to find it. So that's why go with opposition. There was a lot of talk about corruption today in the days of the outside opposition. However, the problem that we on side opposition see is that exactly this principle of corruption, that money is more important than the rule of law, is best embodied by the stand that today's opposition took up when they said that the GDP and money and material happiness matters more than the actual legal binding contracts that were signed repeatedly over time and again and show clearly that the voting violence belong to Argentina, to Argentina instead of Great Britain. First I shall take, take several points of negation, and then I shall move on to a third argument which talks about how the Falkland Islands act as a, as a reminder of colonialization. So first to talk about this principle of self-determination which the opposition kind of put up as the most important, as the most important point they, they have basically in the case. We think this point is completely worthless in today's debate because we cannot talk of self-determination of people when these people were, were integrated, were, when the previous settlers were forcibly removed from the island 
as happened in 1833 when Great Britain removed the previous Argentine settlers of the island and then, and then uh, put its own people there. And even if these new settlers had their children, uh, and these children were born on the island, they still doesn't make it right. Because as a third speaker asked in his UI, and we think this point was was not answered well, was, uh, as he said, even if, let's say, Germany were to start, in, start immigrating people into France over the French border, and then these people made families there and have children and built houses and so forth, and after a couple of decades, Germany would claim this land in the name of Germany, it still wouldn't be right, even though these Germans were now happily settled in France, because this was, because this was not some some random event, but because this was uh, intentional settling of people in lands which which do not belong to the name, to the country of, of those people, and so the whole point of self-determination is of complete complete importance in today's debate. Now we will also talk about the economy and the whole economic point for me, even though it is it is less relevant uh, that. And even if it were relevant, but it is not, because as, well, as, well, as I shall talk further on about, again, these conventions, even if it were relevant, it still doesn't make a lot of sense. Because the point is that what, although the, although, uh, the Balkan Islands get a lot of money, the problem is that this money is being pumped in from Great Britain, whereas the Balkan Islands do not have any particular industry of their own. The, the problem is that virtually any kind of enterprise in the Falkland Islands, such as manufacturing and so forth, would be, complete, would, be, would be a complete economic failure because the costs of importing all of this to Great Britain and to, the, and to the British markets all across the world would be so high that only a very specific kind, that only very, very rare kinds of manufacturing would be possible. And hence, this GDP originates from British financial injections and, and from and from tourism, which would probably stay the same if Argentine, uh, if Argentine became the, the owner of these islands instead of any actual economic enterprises. Whereas Argentine could provide such enterprises because the Argentine market is extremely close and it would be completely economically feasible to manufacture products and to actually create some industry in the islands, which would then export to South America. And, all, and also, considering the GDP point, if the islands have 3,000 people, then of course, even if the total GDP is very small, then it may, then the GDP per capita may be, um, may still appear large. But we think that this is a statistical manipulation and not a real indicator of the island's supposed extreme welfare. Now, uh, to move on, I'd like to really emphasize this point we made about international treaties, because we feel that this that this simply isn't getting caught, and that the point raised by side opposition about no man's land here really isn't applicable. The Nuka Convention didn't refer to co uh, didn't refer to colonies in the sense uh, in the sense of play of lands where previous settlers had lived at the point of colonialization. And thus the Nuka Convention does not in any way exclude the Falkland Islands, even if they were no man's land, because they talked about territories from. Uh, and they talked about Great Britain renouncing certain territories and colonies. And because uh, and because Great Britain renounced these, ter these territories repeatedly, this is why we think uh, that uh, that the four times not written the second set. And also, uh, this, and also, I think it was side opposition themselves who said that the French were the first to arrive on, on this island. So based on this first, uh, so based on this principle of first sighting then the islands should belong to France, if this was so important. But because France gave this island, sold these islands to Spain later, and because Spain never renounced its claim, we believe that based on the Latin principle of uti, uti posideris uris, which means that the colonies of a certain state later belong to, later, uh, belong to the nearest independent colony of the same state. Based on this principle that was uh, uh, put into use all over the world elsewhere, the Falkland Islands should belong to Argentine. So, so they renounced their rights, their rights in exchange of no Argentines in that, uh, no Argentines could get into that island. So Argentines made a uh, commitment themselves and they broke it by invading that island purposely. 
So we think in that case, this uh, agreement is not as valid in terms of the point of view. So we mentioned repeated, uh, repeated agreements, and the, and the agreement after that was made after Argentina has already settled into the island, and yet Britain still renounced it, still renounced it going to the island. So we think that even if one of those agreements was later broken by Argentina, Britain still showed itself that it will, that despite this, this Argent, Argentinian mistreatment, it is still prepared to give up these islands. And so this point is not relevant. And now to, to go to my, to my to a further argument, which talks about floating islands acting as a remainder, as a painful remainder, basically, of colonialization. We think that the whole principles of colonialization, so of taking certain territories which did not historically belong to a certain country, which were perhaps on the other side of the world, by brute force, is, is something that was condemned several times by, all, by virtually all the European countries, uh, and, uh, and decolonialization has been put into effect pro, pro, mm, all over the previous century. And we think that these few, that these examples that still remain of colonialization, so examples of territories, uh, of territories that are still held by European countries, far outside the historical, the historical uh, lands, uh, are bizarre and should be denounced as soon as possible, because they, because they show that the European countries, such as Britain, are still unable to get rid of this, of this basic principle that. That simple, that simple brute force is the one that gets a country territory. And we think that even if Britain has renounced, let's say, 98% of its colonial territory, we think that this 2% that, this that remains scattered all over the world in the form of islands, in the form of territories, and so on, which should belong to other countries instead of Britain, that this 2% is enough to show that Britain has not given up this idea yet. And whereas we in Europe may perhaps not think so much of it, the problem is that elsewhere in the world, this still causes very dramatic memories. And that's why uh, most countries in, in Africa and several countries in Asia, such as China, have continuously backed up the claim of Argentina, because it reminds them of their own colonial, uh, colonial things they had to, to live up with and bear, and because it reminds them of their own dramatic history, which would be alleviated a lot if we were actually to give these islands back to Argentina and get rid of our colonial distress. All right, so thank you very much. And I will now let you call upon, and I'm sorry if I mispronounced, Today, we believe no country has the right to claim and invade the land, destroying an established and peaceful community. And that's why today we are team opposition. We believe that Portland Islands should stay as United Kingdom overseas territory. Today, I will be presenting you one argument, which is going to be about condemning violence and claim of Argentina or Falkland Islands, which we saw in 1982. Before, but before that, I would like to move on with my rebuttal. Firstly, let's uh, start with their argument about colonialism. Firstly, we say that there, there, there is no colonialism in today's world, and because these people are not Argentine, these people uh, Argentine people, they are not being exploited. These people always exist from British descent, and this is what colonialism is about. If we were to go there and exploit people, exploit the natives and their resources, then we would actually be having memories of colonialism. However, this is not the situation, and what you have been talking about is absolutely ridiculous. No, thank you. And secondly, we say that actually the United Kingdom provides these people with services which we haven't seen in any colonial state. And, and uh, furthermore, we say that Argentine claims, no thank you sir, Argentine claims actually uh, promote violence because we saw that they invaded these lands, they caused a war in Falkland Islands, they killed civilians, they caused civilian deaths in the, in the, com in the country. No thank you. And if we were to give back both the uh, islands to Argentina, then we would actually be oh, approving violence and approving their 
uh, on Facebook page. However, we say that we are according to law here, in, uh, here by diplomacy and we are trying to provide happiness to the established community. And we say, even if it reminds colonialism, we don't, we don't believe that we would be justified to view these people who were born to Falkland Islands, who are not responsible to live there in the first place, who were born into that place, and we would make the wrong generation suffer uh, for some reminder of colonialism. And furthermore, we say that even if we give Falkland Islands back to Argentina, this will not suddenly remove the effects of reminders of colonialism, because the people who lost their grandfathers, the people who lost their grandparents, for example, will still have the same memory, and we say that this will be no, no major improvement in your case. And, you, and, you, and we say that the happiness comes first, and we say that the United Kingdom provides better services, and thus the 95% of the Falkland Islanders actually wanted to stay as United Kingdom overseas territory students, and we say that these people's ideas should be heard first. first uh, the second point uh, that I'm going to rebut is uh, okay, about the right to self determination. You told us that the right to self determination did not exist. However, we told you that this was just like a summer house that we locked it up and went away for a while. However, actually, the, actually no, thank you. United Kingdom still had claims over Argentina. They still had a platform which was saying that this land, land belonged to the United Kingdom. And even, even if this, this was not the case, we say that after the Second World War, the diplomacy and the bureaucracy actually changed. No, uh, no country was no, no thank you, was able to claim a land and invade the land, uh, uh, and destroy a society which was settled there, which, which was adopted at those land. And we talked about how actually the uh, Falkland Islands belonging to the United Kingdom caused great economic failure for these people. However, we told you that $55,000 as GDP per capita Question. is not a, a bad number. It's a number that can't be rich in the United States. It's a number that can't be rich in most of Europe. We said that these people actually, no thank you, export oil, they export wool, and they have tourism. And guess what? The technology has improved, ladies and gentlemen. And with the plane, you, it only takes a day, for example, to export these uh, goods. Thus, these people actually want to uh, keep, with the, keep their trace. Because we say, if, no thank you, and also, if these people were to trade with Argentina, we say that the quality of the good day that they will be receiving would actually be far worse, and that's why we still provide these people with their right to trade uh, with whomever they want. Okay. Yeah. So you say that it belongs to Britain because there was a flag. That means that if I write my name on the front door of this university, this university belongs to me. Okay, thank you. But does that mean that if you go to a land and invade a land, and if you're successful just because you're more powerful than the citizens there, does that mean that no, you, no. you are going to have the no, you are going to have the ownership no. of England? No, we say that in, in 1982, Argentina tried to do this. However, we condemn its actions, and that's what I'm going to be talking about in my argument, as I told you. We say the settlers of the, set the first settlers, which were from Wales and Scotland, in the Falkland Islands, which was no man's land before, have been living there over 200 years. They have people of bones with the island, and their lifestyle has adapted to the island. And we don't think army or a navy should be enough to expel these citizens of the Falkland Islands, like Argentina tried to write today. And we say what Argentina did in 1982 was against diplomacy, was against uh, bureaucracy, and it was against the treaty between the United Kingdom and Argentina about keeping peace in, in those lands. Argentina caused civilian deaths in, in Falkland Islands, and they ignored the civilian lives. They only uh, tried to do this for their own benefit. Uh, but the United Kingdom didn't kill uh, even any people when it kept to over four times as a person. Oh, no, thank you. And if we let, uh, if England were to let Argentina have these lands, then the global message that invasion may be enough to claim a land would be spread out in the world. 
However, he condemned the use of power to harm a settled community, a community which was living in peace, living in harmony, which was disrupted by side Argentina today. And we say, after the Second World War, the world has newly defined diplomatic behaviors, and we say, all settled communities have the right to maintain their peace in their lands. For example, if the USA has a really powerful army, and if it were to go and invade the land and uh, dominate that land, uh, we don't think it, it, the USA ha uh, should have the right to own, own that land. And what, the, uh, what Argentina tried to do is exactly this, and we say that this is not, not the way to resolve problems. And if this message was sent, what would happen? We say that we have disputes between North Korea and South Korea. We have disputes in disputes between IRA and United Kingdom, for example. However, we do not want to promote violence as a way to resolve conflict. We want to promote uh, diplomacy and democracy as, as a way to uh, as a way to resolve international disputes. And we say that in the uh, opposition case, we provide a much peaceful world to all people, a much uh, rightful ownership to the Falkland Islanders, and that's why uh, you should vote for team opposition. Alright, so thank you very much. And I call up on I find it quite ironic that a side promoting interests of the United Kingdom comes up and says a country has no right to claim to claim the land of our of others just because it is more powerful. Just because Argentina maybe tried to protect the lands that were taken from her by Great Britain. It does not mean that they have absolutely no claim to the territory themselves. I think we need another history lesson, because obviously the lesson from our first video was not enough. The first settlers on the Falkland Islands, the last Malvinas, were actually French settlers. And these settlers, these French claim, was transferred, legitimately transferred, to Spain uh, after that. When the Spanish imperial, uh, when the Spanish colonial empire was basically falling apart, Britain, if I may say, uh, used this opportunity of Spanish weakness to basically come to the Falkland Islands, tell the 30, the, 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 the population of that, of that area to go away and go to the next closest Sp other Spanish colony and settle British people there. But today, uh, today inside the position did not just make one mistake, they made three mistakes on three different levels. And I will talk about, about these three uh, things in my speech. Firstly, they made, they made the mistake on a law and treaty and international relations um, uh, level. Then they made the, 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 the mistake of with, uh, regarding the legitimacy uh, no, thank you, of, of basically uh, of land just because of self-determination. And lastly, they made, uh, they made mistakes regarding the economic argument. Uh, they have provided. So, for firstly, don't think it. I have largely answered the problem of legitimacy on this island. We think that since Spain was the legitimate owner owner of these of these islands, it is a natural uh, natural way of law that these islands should be transferred to the nearest closest uh, Spanish colony because they cannot be a state of their own. Um, yes. Don't you think that the Argentinians also broke up every single treaty that was made by UN and also in Mexico when these people invaded that island in 1982 and killed much more people than the English has done? They killed two people. And also, I uh, I believe that there was uh, there was an incident. I I, I read something about it. Uh, I, there was an incident with the British sailors which came uh, to to the island to remove those people, and there were also people killed there. However, there is no uh, there is no definite record of that. And more than that, anyway, what we have proved today basically is that when it comes to uh, to the law of claim of the land, right? When it comes to, to the claim that the, the, the a Spanish, basically Spanish territory should be transferred to a free Spanish colony and not to another colonialist, 
I think this claim is a perfect, the perfectly legitimate claim. The second problem they had was this, uh, this idea that because the people that currently live on the Las Malinas, on the Falkland Islands, because they want to be British, um, then we should give this to Britain. And the problem with this is, of course, the problem that they are British, and that's why they want to be, uh, want to be with the United Kingdom. If, if just because Britain got there, moved the, uh, moved the, moved the uh, Argentine population, the then Spanish later would be Argentine population out of the Falkland Island, settled British people there, and that basically, no thank you, that on itself does not warrant a legitimate claim for that territory. So their argument, their claim that because the people there are self-determined British people, that the people there are self-determined uh, to be uh, basically a part of the United Kingdom is not a reason to have this in the in the United Kingdom uh, in the, as a part of Britain. Uh, and also, the question I have here is uh, is connected with the next with the next point, uh, and that is the massive massive GDP they're trying. That they're, they're talking about. How does a a group of islands with barely 3,000 inhabitants, without any major industry except the ex export of some raw materials, manage to get a higher GDP than the United States of America? No, thank you. And any uh, country of Europe. What we think and what is a what is a fact is that the United the uh, British, the United Kingdom, is boosting and is giving a lot of money to the to these people artificially, not as a part of the market system in which we all live. And we think this is a huge problem, because we don't think that this will continue. What we think is that this GDP, the uh, the, the Portland Islands have right now, is a consequence of the political uh, political uh, um, struggle, I'd say, of the political uh, situation uh, in Britain, no thank you, where the interest is to have this people to want uh, to be rich and to be to make them happy while they live in Britain because then it's harder for Argentina to make legitimate claims. And we think that because of that, we don't think that on a long term basis it will be better for these people to stay in the United Kingdom. We think that with these people are thrown into a normal market system without the boosted political money from the United Kingdom, we, don't, we think that it would be a lot better for these people if they would be a part of Argentina, no thank you, and not a part of the United Kingdom. We think that the economic system right now on the Balkan Island is a artificially created economic system which will not last and which will not be a long term, no thank you, uh, wait, no, 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 which will not be a long term benefit for the Balkan Island. Yes. How do you consider a huge oil export when the two next this island has artificially strong? These islands only have to be because of their exports of oil and other materials. This is the well, first of all, oil exports are not a long term. Uh, a not a long term industry. They're not a long term way of having a good uh, a good basically economy. They will maybe last for ten years, maybe for fifteen, but after that, if you will have to import everything you make, uh, export everything you make and import everything you make through Great Britain or through high cost through Argentina again, it is not a long term benefit. And just no thank you, just looking at uh, looking at and short-term benefits like that is more a sign of a of a populist government than it is of a government that really takes care of its own people. So, uh, what, have you, what have I shown you today? I have shown you that first of all, the uh, the Argentina has a uh, has a claim, a legitimate claim for to, to the for five continent islands on the basis of international law. Second of all, even if it had not have a legitimate claim uh, regarding international law. The, the, the way the claim the claim the uh, United Kingdom has about the the populace having a right to basically uh, self-determine themselves there is not valid because they were uh, they were settled there. They were artificially settled there to basically create this British uh, British land, even though that it's not a legitimately British uh, British <coughs> Territory. And furthermore, the, we think that Argentina will be, on a long-term basis, uh, be better able to support and to, support, to create an actual economy on these islands than is the, the help they're basically getting from the United Kingdom right now. So because of these three things, because of international treaties, because of the false, uh, false legitimacy from the South 
a determination, and because of long-term economic gains, we beg you to propose. Thank you. Not stray Argentine police, not stray Spanish police who shipped this down. Original settlements, original occupation of the island was owned by the British government. It's not. And therefore, no, thank you, sir. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, the original, the quintessential ownership of these, of these islands belongs to England in the first place. Argentina, before the Spanish, uh, the Spanish government, only had fleets and ships or stray uh, idle occupants. I do non occupying citizens that we shown, and they were not actually there. In fact, like my second speaker told you, it was a no man zone. Moving on, ladies and gentlemen. Now, two proposition comes up and tells us about these 1825 agreements that we've had with them. But listen to what happened in the 1825 agreement. In the 1825 agreement, ladies and gentlemen, both Argentina and England, ladies and declared that they would not occupy the island more than they would be. British, British uh, people did so because of the economic crisis that was going on, because they had to leave the zone, but Argentina came back and occupied it, thus knowing the agreement. In other words, this agreement that these nations had between each other does no longer exist and it cannot be legally surveyed in the zone because it's not an agreement that is valid anymore because the Argentine, the Argentine citizens, by occupying this island, like so, ladies and gentlemen, actually nullified this agreement in the first place. And so, moving on, ladies and gentlemen, even if we were to accept that agreement was, was, uh, was at Valid, which it is not, ladies and gentlemen, in 1982, the Argentine forces, ladies and gentlemen, came and actually began combat, started combat against these, uh, against uh, the English, the English settlements there, and they actually uh, laid amphibious assault on these people, ladies and gentlemen. And there, therefore, they were the first violators of these contracts in the first place. Of course, no treaty that they advocate, ladies and gentlemen, can be used in this debate simply because Argentina used the act of violence in order to take these islands and of course the British settled them down, ladies and gentlemen. Moving on. Yeah, the idea of proximity comes to comes by a proposition. But ladies and gentlemen, does proximity really matter? No, ladies and gentlemen, it does not matter because the British are already much more than capable of supplying these islands with the services that they need. So ladies and gentlemen, while Argentina can barely provide their own people with the basic services that they need, the British government provides services to the extent that they can have a GDP, you know, maybe sort of 55,000 on average in In other words, the British government is perfectly capable because of their, because of their advanced technology, because of their advanced nationalism, ladies and gentlemen, to provide these people with the money they need and with the services that they need. Argentina, on the other hand, can barely even provide its own people. How on earth would they be able to provide the people there that are actually chiefly British in the first place? Why would they provide them with anything in the first place? They wouldn't. Moving on. Team proposition number Team proposition agrees with us that Britain is, in fact, supreme to Argentina in terms of power and, of course, money they just spend. And therefore, their whole point on the practicality of Argentina being able to provide these people with services falls into one. In other words, they have no practical, they have no practical benefits to these people, simply because they accept Argentina is not as developed as England economically or in terms of economy or something. In other words, uh, England is perfectly capable, no thank you, sir, of actually providing these people with the money they can need. We've proven to you this in all of our, in all of our Moving on. Their POI, you probably know, 
country, and people are regarding Germany, ladies and gentlemen, or France invading Germany. This is completely irrelevant to this debate. Because Germany was never originally French territory. The French had nothing to do with Germany in the first place. Because French can't occupy Germany, because Germany is already occupied by German people. Ladies and gentlemen, in this scenario, the Falkland Islands were never truly occupied by the Argentine people. In other words, there was no reason that the English would come in and kick them out, because they didn't, they weren't there. The English simply claimed the territory that was already theirs, they assumed. They simply settled down, and they were the first ones to talk to settle down, and Argentina was the one that attacked them in the first place. Yes, you say that the Lucta Treaty, you are saying that Argenti Argentines cannot return. You say that this is actually untrue. Sir, 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 please, let's look at the treaty itself. In the treaty, both both sides of the treaty, ladies and gentlemen, agree they would not actually return to this, uh, return to this island in the first place. And I thank you, sir. Both Spain and Argentina did. Both Spain and Italy did. But because Spain actually know this treaty by the Indians, by all the Chinese islands, then we see that this treaty does not apply to the situation. And we see that it is exactly justified in taking back the territory that was originally there to this time. Moving on. The right to self-determination, ladies and gentlemen. Timo proposition tells us that this does not exist. However, we should be thinking not. Ladies and gentlemen, definitely the right to, right to self-determination does exist. Because this place was already originally British territory. British, the British were the first ones to settle there, and the British was, were, were the first ones to declare sovereignty on these islands. In other words, of course it was their island, and the fact that they took it later from the Argentines, who forcibly entered in the first place, does not even matter, ladies and gentlemen, because it was always British territory to begin with. And Argentina not only know all the agreements regarding this issue, ladies and gentlemen, but also England has been here for more than 200 years. It is Occupy this territory more than 200 years. The people there are chiefly British, ladies and gentlemen, and therefore they definitely do have the right to self determination, and they clearly choose England because they know that England will already have better services, will already provide them with better foreign services, ladies and gentlemen. If, if, if these people thought that Argentina would be able to provide better than the, their, own, uh, their own nation, England, ladies and gentlemen, they would probably vote for Argentina. And therefore, the right to self determination argument in this sense clearly, ladies and gentlemen, uh, works beside opposition. Moving on, ladies and gentlemen. The same proposition goes on to say that the UK is actually boosting these people's economy, and that its GDP uh, of 55,000 on average is, uh, is not true. But let's look at how, in fact, these people have a GDP of 55,000 people in Israel. They have oil and other materials they, they, they export from this island in Israel. And because of this, we can see that they are perfectly capable of actually having trade relationships with other countries, including the USA, including, uh, including Britain, including surrounding nations in Israel. And therefore, there is no, there's no matter of not being able to trade these in Israel. This is perfectly possible. And this proves this, ladies and gentlemen. We see from the fact that they transport oil and other materials that they can indeed train. So, ladies and gentlemen, why, why no thank you, sir, why does the proposition proposition think that Argentina can provide better trade relationships? Well, these people can already have great trade relationships with both Britain, the United States, and other nations in the in the vicinity. So clearly this point also uh, goes aside the opposition. Moving on, ladies and gentlemen. Argentina. Argentina, ladies and gentlemen, is a Spanish colony. The Spain the Spaniards actually came from Europe and invaded these areas in, in the early 17th century. However, we can see that because of this, because Argentina is in fact a Spanish colony, they never had original ownership of this place in the first place. Because Britain actually was the first one to settle, the British government was the first one to make research, they were sovereignty on these islands. We can see that the British government was indeed the true ownership of the true ownership of the island. And Argentina, despite their arguments of proximity, ladies and gentlemen, is actually a Spanish colony, and they're just as foreign to these islands. They're just as foreign to these islands as the British people are. And just the fact that they are now a colony in the in, in, in a close region of South, South America, ladies and gentlemen, is relevant. Because we've already told you how proximity does not matter. Simply because English, the, the British nation is a developed enough nation to provide for services better than Argentina despite the proximity of these gentlemen. And they already agreed with us on the fact that the British government can't provide better services by saying that the British have more money, of course, more power, and of course, the possibility of providing services. So their whole practical analysis of this debate falls in this gentlemen and goes to side opposition. And that is to summarize, we told you about how, in fact, in our practical analysis, we make the islanders happy simply because they want to receive services from the English people. And ladies and gentlemen, the like already, like I just told you, accepts that the British have supremacy in the matter of economics and for services provided. And the principal analysis, ladies and gentlemen, we've already told you that the islands were always originally English territory simply because the English were the first ones to declare sovereignty, the first ones to settle down truly on that island, and didn't let go of the sovereignty of the nation. They didn't let go. And even if they had, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the agreements. Uh, proposed by Team Office Group Bell. All right, thank you very much. And I will now want to follow up back to deliver the uh, reply speech. Sorry. Well, thank you. Thank you.
ladies and gentlemen, just because according to the team proposition, England to uh, dissatisfy the treaty between Argentina and England, this island should go to Argentina. Well, we say this is fallacious and contradictory to the case of team proposition. Because Argentinians also uh, uh, outruled a number of treaties which were ensured safety and the happiness of every single people, made by NATO, made by UN, which is much, much more justified than any convention of Nutkasu. And that's why, Mr. Speaker, we see that the case is based on a flawed case, Mr. Speaker. Two practical, uh, two flash points of this debate. Firstly, principal point about how, how who is the right to honor, and secondly, the practical point that who is the right to raise by side problems. Now, let's get the first idea about right to honor. They talk about how just because they were the first one and they gave up on uh, by a treaty, they should be islands should be belonging to Argentina. Well, we say this island is flawed because Argentina also outlawed a number of treaties. But also, Mr. Speaker, I suppose that Argentina was also supposed to be balancing this, right? We saw also that Argentina was, Argentina was supposed to not invade the uh, territories of the Falkland Island in the United Kingdom, Mr. Speaker. Now, why else would the English would di di directly renounce their right? This was a settled agreement made by the Spanish and also the United Kingdom. That's why it's not actually correct. We don't think that the United Kingdom would just directly get up on all of their rights on an island. This is very silly, Mr. Speaker. We said in that case, there was a reason there was a balance between the people. And that's why since the Argentinians are the first one to overrule this uh, agreement, this is justifiable to act this way, Mr. Speaker. Now let's get the second idea about who came first. We say, Mr. Speaker, these people are like approximately say came into the, like, approximately the same time. But more importantly, Mr. Speaker, who settled first is much more important. We say that since these people are the first ones to actually build a colony and live peacefully there, these people are the rightful owners. They live play, they left that flag, they left that flag and flag are saying that this island Mars, and they were the first peaceful colonists to begin with. And in that case, Mr. Speaker, even if they if these people settled later, we think that this is not justifiable because this was last and, and they were the uh, first peaceful colony to begin with. And lastly, they talk about the set, we talk about the set determination idea. They talk about these, this is not just right because these people are natives. Well, excuse me, Mr. Speaker, but the Spanish and Argentinians are na not natives also. We don't think that, Mr. Speaker, this should be directly going to the people of Argentina. And secondly, even if these people are, are from Argentina, we believe, Mr. Speaker, these people will be choosing Britain because of the practical size, because of the practical benefits that the United Kingdom does offer to them. And in that case, Mr. Speaker, we believe, firstly, there is no native art of the decision. We believe that the first colonization, person to colonize there has the right to ownership idea. And secondly, Mr. Speaker, even if these people were Argentinian, they would be still choosing the Britain because of the practical advantages, advantages that it has today. Now let's get the second idea, the practical side of the space. They talk about how this artificially made. Firstly, show me a problem that this was actually artificially made. Even if, if even if this was artificial, uh, artificial made, Mr. Speaker, these people are stinking rich. Which means, Mr. Speaker, these people are very happy. And secondly, this is not factually backed up, Mr. Speaker. This is just an assumption made the, by side like, that say, saying that look, this is made. This may be artificially made. Well, we say, Mr. Speaker, if these people are uh, exporting immense amount of oil, immense amount of coal, then, Mr. Speaker, these people are probably going to prosper to begin with. And let's Mr. Speaker, in that case, we see the trade relations that the United Kingdom has with the all around the world in terms of the United being a European citizen, a European, a European Union, and also the trade benefits that the United Kingdom has, does supply these people with a massive amount of benefits in terms of uh, in terms of trade. We say you trading with the European Union is much better than Argentinians trading with Chile, Mr. Speaker. In that case, much more prosperity is going to go to the people of that island. And if this was a problem, then people would be not okay with it, and people would be saying that we want Argentina. But clearly, Mr. Speaker, they are so happy with it the economic situation that they have today, and these people want to go to the, uh, the United Kingdom. And lastly, condemning that one, they talk, they talk about how the British were wild, but they really never killed anybody, they just asked, asked these people to live because they, we were the first colony here, and that's what these people thought. But in the case of Argentina, Mr. Speaker, they forcibly, one day, out of a sudden, invaded that uh, country, forced people to settle, forced people to move, and kill people. And that's why, go in opposition. All right, thank you very much. And I will now call on Miha to summarize the debate from the proposition point of view. This debate came down to two questions. Whether, whether, let's like mention, you can even belong to Argentina, and you said yes. And whether providing services to the people of Argentina is better than Argentina, and you said once again yes. So, does it legally belong to Argentina? 
This was really the debate about history. And we said quite quite few things. And we could, we have said things with many things. On the other side, they said many things that were not true. They said to the French came first, but then the third people come and says the Britain was wrong. Which one is it true and why? We see that we had many, many misrepresentations of history. We also say when it comes to Nuta Convention, and they say that it said that if Argentina comes to comes to comes to, to this island, that there should be no such people. But we say that this once again is not true. And we say we say that it's actually those treaties that justify why Argentina is there. We gave you two treaties and both rules. Firstly, the Treaty of Nuta. The British side has said, well, you can go there. We say they actually then, years later, coming back and say, well, we don't agree with it anymore, or just because because you say something else doesn't justify it. And anyways, even if that was not true, we say that they, they signed the friendship, friendship, the friend, friendship agreement in the year 1825. We told you this in our first speech. We asked you if, the, if your side was actually true, but it isn't. Why would they actually sign friendship, friendship uh, treaty if they were if Argentinians were actually not doing what they had to do? But what the only thing we actually hear from them is well, the Britain came there and they had a flag. A flag. We say that the flag is nothing. We say that we live in a world where there's a world of law. We say one flag doesn't justify anything. Just because we have a flag on our table, this table doesn't belong to us. So we can clearly one way it legally belongs to Las Malvinas and they belong to Argentina. But we say that, the, that, that even if it wasn't about only legal terms, we have still one because we, we said that it provides better service. But we say that only it still with the only minimum on legal service we would still be legal. But why we also say that there are going to be better service? We have provided you a very good analysis of Rafa New from Chile. We told you how there, there's much better service and there's boosting economy. They said, well, we don't say we don't have to say anything about it. We don't have any argument about it. We're just going to give you a number. That there's something called BDP, which is fifty-five thousand. But we say that this uh, this uh, this very number uh, well, was actually made made something useless in the third speech. First we said, well, Britain is giving all this money. But then the third speaker comes and says, well, this is not the case. It's just that they have oil. So it is, we think it is very contradictory. They say Argentina cannot provide them with money if we say that there is already oil that lies there. Will we ask them, like, how, how, how Argentina wouldn't be able to do that? And we think that it, is a very bad, it, it looks very bad from their side to just say Argentina bad, bad, bad. And they try to portray Argentina as some kind of third world country that has corruption and has all kinds of, of negative services. We said that Argentina is the most successful state in South America. It has BDP bigger than some of European states. We said they can provide the services to those people who like. But we said we said that the services services are the one that is going to be much better than outside. So why did we really do it? We first we showed you that it's legally demands. And we say that we live in a world of law where the law has to be absolutely obeyed. When you sign a sign a sign agreement, we have to fulfill it. But even if that wasn't the case, we said that still we provide better services. We say it was Malvina to Argentina and we are incredibly proud to propose this motion. All right, thank you very much. Uh, for the debate, we're going to need some time to decide. I have a second like 10 minutes, so we'll be back in 10 minutes and 